Well, hello, coffee time friends. How are you? It is time for Southern Sunday lunch, and Mama's got me doing chores. I'm on KP duty, peeling potatoes. Mama, what are we having today? Tell us about it. We're going to have the rest of that chicken, a few little tenders, and if they don't last, we're going to warm up the. I can't think what Chicken it, cordon bleu. And nice finish time. with it. But right now we're going to fry these strips. And, and you're, I've got you peeling potatoes. Mm-hmm. KP Diddy. Yeah, and you can talk to them a minute while I get my green beans ready. What kind of green beans do we have, Mama? We're going to have some little red peanut beans. Oh, homegrown, home canned? You want a quart to have some extra to eat? Yeah, I could eat. We ain't had none in a long time, Mama. Oh. Since we give up cooking, we <laughs> since we haven't had time to cook in two weeks, I like to have a good green bean. Y'all ever just crave good old home cooking food? Just something that she was raised up on, that comfort food, like a good mashed potato and some good green beans that she was raised up on. We do. Every once in a while, Mama said, I have to got to have a tater in that means I need some good cooking, maybe some pork chops and green beans or meatloaf and some mashed potatoes and peas or, you know, those meals that just say home. Uh, uh, what's your what's your favorite home cooked meal? What's the meal that reminds you of being home when you was a kid or coming home from school and just uh, couldn't wait to get to it? My favorite meal used Florida to be... Beans, beans, come over here, Mama, show them. So now these court this is seven nineteen. I'm so old. Those have been around a while, but they're still good. And that's the whole point in preserving and canning. See they're kind of they got that red look to them, but that's all good. That's the red beans in there. And there these are called peanut beans. And every time we have them, someone will ask me, is that the same as and you might name a different bean. The best we can come up with a southern thing is peanut beans, and I think they are also known as red half runners instead of white half runners. But the regular peanut bean is not the same as a as a pink half runner. Pink half runner. Yeah, but it's not the same because my mommy uh, these don't bind up as much as a runner does. But they taste similar. Well, yeah, they're similar, but the regular old timey peanut bean is the. What I'm used to fixing and doing. And they're kind of like an old-timey, what they call shuck bean or dried bean. They're in between a green bean and a shuck bean. Right. Um, if you've ever had dried beans or shuck beans, dried beans, they used to string them up and they'd take a needle and thread, double or triple that thread, and then they would just simply... They break them about that big or so, and they. Or did you even break them? You no, we string them whole. We Hank, string them whole. Or we put them on a screen bar and break them and dry them that way too. And I've known of you all back in the day over at my mom's, putting them in the car window. Yeah, that helps keep the bugs away from them. And you put them up in the back of the car window, and they would be. Uh, they dry there. Uh, but then you dry them, get all the moisture out, and they'll, they'll keep, and you can keep them that way. What you do with them then, actually, is dry them, put them in the freezer. Put them in the freezer, put them in bags. Put them in freezer bags, or put them in the freezer back in the old days. And um, you can keep them for a long time. Then you rehydrate them, take them out and soak them. Mama didn't do these much when I was a kid. She did these over at Mamaw's, poor Mamaw, but... Uh, you never did do them much here, did you, Mama? Oh, I ain't a big fan of them. She ain't a big fan of them, but her mama was. And um, so I remember when I was a kid going over there, and Mama would have them hung out on the back porch. And she'd also, Mama and them would take them and put them in pans and put them in the back of the car windows. Kind of old memories. Uh, I remember eating them. Uh, some people eat them traditionally at Christmas or uh, sometime they'll have what they call shuck beans. Uh, and they're good, and they're kind of like the red peanut beans, but they're not exactly like them. So that's what a peanut bean is. We don't really know if they're in your area or not. In but our area, you can buy them in the, the feed stores and stuff, and 
they'll say peanut beans. Yeah, here we go at the tractor supply for your local co-op. Uh, anywhere else, Mama? Uh, I, don't know. I guess any feed and seed, if you have those there. We still have feed and seed stores here. Uh, people have uh, cows and horses, and so we have feed and seed stores. I'm just cubing these up, putting them in cold water, and uh, then I'll rinse them good twice, and then we'll boil them. And you want to boil potatoes in cold water. Start them out in cold water and then let them heat up slowly on the stove. If you start them out in hot water, it releases a lot of the starch and you'll get gummy mashed potatoes. And if you whip yours with a mixer, you'll have gummier mashed potatoes. So if you find yourself with mashed potatoes that are a little sticky, you release too much of the Starchy more or less. Starchy. We boil ours so they're done, to use their fork tender, you call it. And then we uh, mash them with a masher. Well, you try not to mash them too much. You try to get the lumps primarily out of them, but sometimes there's a lump or two, but that just means good home mashed potatoes. Uh, now I've got my few little tenders in here that Mama, was left. Get on there. Okay, I've got them in this bowl, and I'm going to... Let me turn you down. Can y'all see Mama? Mama, you see yourself in there? Oh, yeah. I'm going to sprinkle just a little bit of salt on them. I didn't get no salt on that one. And a little bit of pepper. And just a dash of this, uh, what is it, ranch? Ranch dress. We buy it in the bulk. You can get it from Amazon or you can get it at different bulk stores. Walmart used to have it. Walmart does have it, I think, sometimes. Now that's ranch. Just ranch. Just like you would buy. If you got a package. Whoa. whoa. Catch them taters, mama. I'm good. I caught them. You got that in there. And now, I am going to pour buttermilk over this. And let's just soak just a second or two. I'm going to mix that up so we'll have spices all in there. And you can put a little seasoning salt in it or a little red pepper if you want a little zip, a little tang. Um, and it doesn't make it too hot. It just gives it a flavor. We, I put different stuff in it sometimes. Mama, you ever put anything in yours? I'm a plain chain. You know. Yeah, I've got you on ranch, though. Yeah, I did add ranch. Because she ate some of mine and it didn't poison her. Or make her sick, or any of those things she claimed. To, if you add any spices, it would make her happy. I'm like my brother. I can only eat <laughs> certain things in certain places. <laughs> my uncle, if he did, he wouldn't say he didn't want to go out to eat, but he said the only place I need is the Sonic or a drive-in or something. He didn't want to go in. He didn't want to be fooled with, and he just he just said I can't eat everywhere. He was truly country. He just wanted to eat somewhere you could stay in the car. Hey, well, Mama, you got buttermilk and ranch, salt and pepper. What else? That's all in here. That's all. And I've mixed it all up and coated it. And then my little throwaway plate here I'm going to use. I'm going to use some flour here. This is what really self-rising is what I'm going to use. You can use plain flour if you want. It doesn't matter a lot on chicken. We don't find. I don't buy a lot of plain flour. So. Plain flour is the same as you may know as all purpose or AP flour. And this right here is my cornstarch. And in this big container, I use quite a bit of cornstarch. So I'm gonna put in a good and tablespoon of cornstarch. I think that'll be enough, don't you? Yeah, looks good. Mix and, it in with my flour. And you can also put a little bit of uh, ranch dressing in that, and it, it just uh, intensifies that flavor a little bit, but it gives it a good coating. So if you want to sprinkle your little ranch in there or salt and pepper too, kind of put the same thing in the breading as you do in the chicken, just to make it the flavor continue all the way through. Little bit, little bit, little bit of do you want it, Mama? Uh -huh. Okay. 
Mama, is this enough potatoes? I think so. You're getting peel happy. Well, Mama, they were little, kind of. How many are you going to feed today? <laughs> Me and you and some leftovers. Oh, we might make a tater cake next week. A tater cake? We're going to have turkey. We're going to have it every day. Monday. Turkey's just as just for, for Thursday and Friday, maybe Saturday. Turkey and dressing, the dressing's what I like. You know, I like the bread, all the stuff you're not supposed to have. All the goodies. You rough on water on potatoes. You Sorry, Mama. Ladder to salt box. Sorry, Mama. You can tell them about the salt box before you got it. If you're... A lot of times people ask about this little salt box. Um, this is on our Amazon link, uh, which will be in the comments below. And it's just a little swivel lid salt box. The spoon didn't come with these. I bought the spoon separate. I think I got a bag of them. There's several in it. And I just keep that in there. Sometimes you can pinch and so that's just pepper in the salt. And sometimes we just use that little spoon, but that's what that is. Little salt box. Just keep it rubbed. If you shake, the reason people use salt boxes, cooks, is if you use a shaker to add, you really don't know how much salt you've sh shaken. It depends on if all the holes were open. It, so in order to control um, your salt and your pepper when you're adding it to things, on any seasoning really, you never shake it into your pot. You always want to measure it into your pot or at least have, be able to scoop it or dip it and know exactly how much you got because you'll overshake when you think you've not you think you don't have enough in there but uh, the chicken is this you can marinate you can make this up the night before and if you do I would put it in a ziploc bag press all the air out of it you can and um, put it in there overnight but if you want to uh, do it quick like we normally do. Just mix it up in a bowl like Mama did. And uh, put you a little bit in your flour and put you a little bit here. And that's all you have to do. Now you can double dip this to make it extra crunchy by putting it back in the mixture and then dredging it again. This is the dredge over here. And uh, Mama's over there getting the oil hot. And well, you did the potatoes too, didn't you, Mama? Uh -huh. You got the potatoes on too, didn't you? Yeah, I put the potatoes and beans. I've got them on it. And if you want to lay the chicken on this plate. Now that cornstarch she put on there will hold that flour on that chicken while it's cooking. I know we've told you all that before, but we've got some new folks on here that probably ain't heard us say that. But that's what the cornstarch purpose is. It's not for flavor or anything like that, but it will keep that breading on whatever you're frying. Put a little cornstarch, if you're dredging, put a little cornstarch in it and that'll hold it on there. Keeps it from uh, coming off. Also pressing it down like that, we'll press it down into that raw chicken a little bit and it'll hold a little bit better too. Well, not you took my plate? Did you mean to take stack. the plate? I was going to put it in the oil, but it's not hot. Oh, okay. Just don't stack them. No, you don't want to stack them. Just lay them out there gently. This would have been way too much chicken last night for that cordon bleu because we had chicken left in it. But now here's the thing about this particular chicken. We had bought a big thing of it was on sale and... Um, Mom had frozen it, and we didn't want to refreeze it, so we had to fix it some way today. And sometimes if we don't want to cook it, or, you know, don't want to prepare it like with mashed potatoes, green beans, or a meal, we'll just boil it. Put it in a, in a kettle or a boiler, as, you, as some of y'all call it. Boil it with some salt, pepper, and butter, and then the possibilities of what you can do with that are out, out of this world. I mean, you can make fajitas with that. You can make chicken noodle soup with that. You can do all kinds of stuff with that. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to finish dipping and dripping this chicken for Mama, and then we're going to go up the stove and watch her fry it. So y'all hold on just one second. Okay, I don't know if you can hear with all that cooking going on. Mama's got the chicken in the skillet, and it's frying. And 
two pieces, two ground, but that's all right. That was the first two pieces, and that grease was extra hot, and it fried quicker on that one side. But now look at them others. But they're not too brown. They're just no. brown. Oh, okay. Here's the potatoes in a rolling boil. That's where all that steam is. And there's them peanut beans back there. And that's lunch, folks. It's going to be ready before we know it. All right. Mama's going to finish this up. All we have to do is let this finish. And then we're going to be over on that table uh, eating that with Mama. Oh, yes. All right, we're we'll back. back in just a second. All right, Mama's got the mash, or the potatoes over here for me to mash. Um, Mama, I need that, I set that cream right there and put it in the wrong place. Should have put it over here. Ooh, you know what, I left that burner on. Felt the warmth of the burner. <laughs> Felt the warmth of the burner. Yeah. So I'm gonna put about, that's the two tablespoons. That'd be a half. And then another half. So about three tablespoons of butter in this amount of mashed potatoes. And this is evaporated milk, or AKA, we call it cream. Hence, cream potatoes. And it did used to say, pet cream on it, back in the days. Um, Mom, what masher do you want me to use? Uh, this one's handy. There you go. Thank you, ma'am. So she's already put salt in them whenever um, she cooked them. So we may have to add salt, but we've got salted butter, and that's probably going to be enough. If not, we can salt them to taste as we fix them. But I do like to put a little bit of black pepper in them as I'm mashing them. And here's another little secret. Some people use white pepper. Uh, I don't care to see the black flakes in there. and I, I know they got pepper in them. Um, I don't like the smell of white pepper, but that's just me. That's just a personal preference. I don't like it either. Mama don't like it either. That's the reason I don't like it. She told me not to like it when I was a kid. Oh, I did not. Anyway, you want to um, mash your potatoes, get your butter and all that in there before you add your cream. And that's because once you add your cream, then you're just mashing the cream in them. So you want to... Um, make sure you got all your lumps out that you're going to get out. And like I said, we, I don't mind if there's a few little lumps. I'm not one of those people who says, oh, they're not, you know, I won't, don't want no lumps in my mashed potatoes. I don't care because it's potato it tastes good. So you want to get all that done before you add your cream. And then you just want to add your cream as you go. You can leave a little water in them, which mama did this one just a little bit. Uh, because that water will boil out for the most part. And then you can just leave a little bit in the bottom. And that just adds a little bit of moisture to them. It doesn't. You do want to drain them if there's a lot of water, though. Yeah. Now I can already tell these are going to need some more evaporated milk or cream. You can tell when you're stirring them, and you want to make them a little looser than what you want them when you serve them, because they'll stiffen very quickly. Because, like I said, when you're doing this to them, you're releasing those starches, those thickening agents, and they're they're going to thicken right up. Mama just took that cream. Did you see? Some water cream? Well, I was going to use a little bit, Mama, but she don't want me to have it. I won't oh, use I'll it. I'll stir it with you. I was going to put it up over here. You can't. Mama puts it up where you can get through. So, a little bit more cream because you do want them. That's it. <laughs> you do want them creamy. Creamier than maybe what you're going to serve them because within two minutes, they're going to be stiffer than what you have there. Now, can y'all see down in there? That is some good creamy mashed potatoes. And that's cream potatoes, or AKA mashed potatoes. And uh, here's the chicken. Mama's beautiful chicken. And the peanut beans, and here's the mashed potatoes. And we're ready to eat. Now folks, that wasn't long at all. I've done a, a lot of talking, and this has just been 19 minutes since we started the video. And we was on piles once or twice just to finish the chicken and let them potatoes finish cooking. Let me get my Let's coffee. Get this out of way, sir. Yes, ma'am. We're just having store-bought rolls today. No bake. Just plain no. Um, Excuse our, me. Artisanal rolls. That's all right, Mom, if you want to beat that spatula on there. Um, got these at the store. In fact, 
We have variety. Here's the Sara Lee. We like these uh, in a product review way here. These are the Hawaiian rolls. No bait. You just open them and eat them. We like them. And we use those. Mama, you want those? You want these? I want those. Mama likes the Hawaiian. These are the um, Sara Lee, Sara Lee uh, Artisan Bakery Rolls. And they are the wheat. And they are delicious. So that's what we're having for bread today. We don't always do bread. We're not we're not big on bread. A little cornbread every now and then. I like cornbread with my beans, but I do. You drinking bread. water? Oh, yes, sir. I do get my water. Get that water, Mama. I'm going to get me one of these Sara Lee Artisan Rolls. And you want a Sara Lee Hawaiian Roll. I you know me. I want the sweet stuff. Mama likes her rolls, sweetie. Everything I know where the sweet That's not mold on these. This is where they come. It's got that dusted top. Oh, spilled the pepper. This is what the salt. Better throw a little bit of my right shoulder of pepper anyway. Y'all heard that when you was kids, you spilled the salt, you had to put a little bit over you. Right shoulder or left shoulder? Which one was it, Mama? I can't remember. Oh, the ages pressed up on me. Just throw it over both shoulders just to be careful. Be just no wives tell. I don't really hope a lot of, I don't really think there's much to that. I've got all the cold water. I hope you wasn't wanting there. Well, Mama, mm -hmm. I'm drinking hot coffee. I'm drinking hot water, Mama. I know you like your mashed nice. potatoes. You know, I should have made some uh, gravy. Oh, yeah. Chicken we gravy. really didn't need it with the rolls. No, we we're, you know, next week it's, I bet you parents will be saying, no supper tonight, we'll eat Thanksgiving. I want a small piece over here. Were you picking one out? Yeah. That's real small. Well, I'll get me another one when I get through. How about we give you two smiles? Uh -huh. More protein, Mama. Yeah, you and your protein for me. He wants me to eat a lot of protein. Well, Mom, it's better than... If I eat that much chicken, I won't have room for no sweets. <laughs> Are you going to eat sweets? What sweets have you got made? I ain't, but I'll eat something. You, can you reach the handle on the green bag? I sure can. Now I spilled the salt. Oh, this is not a good sign. <laughs> Here you go, sir. You gonna help him? Well, I will. You're the best little helper. I might let you have that job permanently. Like. Oh, you're so sweet. Go back a little bit. Beep, beep, beep. That's good. Put it in. Let me give you a few no, more veggies. No, I don't want more veggies. He's a pushiest fella it ever was. The struggle is real. <laughs> I can sympathize with your parents trying to get your family to eat veggies. Are you going, you moving it around? You don't like where I put it? I don't like it scattered all over my plate. <laughs> <laughs> Let's pray. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful meal. And thank you for these precious hands that prepared it, dear Lord. And we're just so blessed to be able to receive it. And we just pray for the nourishment of our bodies, dear Lord. And we just pray that you'll be with each and every prayer request that's been turned in, dear Lord. What's over, sleep and guy and direct us in your name we pray. Amen. All right. Give it a try, Mama. This chicken, if you put that ranch and you put salt and pepper and you put the ranch in the in the salt and pepper in the breading, it really it stacks those flavors up and it's really good. Mm-mm. Well, I'm gonna eat it my way. <laughs> What do you think of that chicken, Mama? Well, it's good. Just like downtown, ain't it? Mm-hmm. And mashed potatoes with a little bit of peanut beans. Can't beat that either. Everything's good. Mm. You don't have to wait on Thanksgiving to have a good taste of meal. No, you sure don't. This is delicious. Folks, we're going to go and uh, eat, and we're going to let you all go and eat. We just wanted to pop on here today and share this little bit with you um, so we could uh, show you what our Southern Sunday luncheon was. And I don't think you can get any more Southern for lunch than fried chicken. chicken. That's right. It's good and good eats, isn't it, Mama? Mm-hmm. Mama, you got a joke for me? 
No, I don't. And I want you to know, I got said fence. I know. Let's do a correction. Yeah. She, I was busy last night, and, and I, she did say baseline and a fence. So she really did get the joke last night. So, Mama, let's give you a round of applause. Yay. But I didn't realize it till we watched it. <laughs> you didn't correct me on it. I thought, I didn't remember hearing you say fence. Wasn't paying enough attention because usually as soon as you get it, I give you full credit. I know it, but you let that slide. And I you know, somebody that. sent us a joke or two this week, or no, not this week. This has been, this was a few days back. Mm. Let's see, I got one here for you. Mama, this one was kind of cute. I hadn't heard this one before, and let's see who sent this. It was one of y'all that sent it. Um, uh, nah, Donna, Donna Granger, Donna Granger. So this is a Donna Granger show. So mama, this one, it's one of those riddles kind of. Oh, wow. So why did the astronaut restaurant on the moon fail? It was a complete flop. Astronaut restaurant on the moon. Mm. Why it flopped? Yeah. No oxygen? <laughs> That's really close. What is it? They said the food was good, but it just didn't have any atmosphere. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Donna. Oh, wow. That was a good one. Mm -hmm. Appreciate y'all sending us jokes. Uh, a lot of y'all mail them when you do cookbook orders or you send something. So if you got some good jokes, good family-friendly jokes that your kids could tell, Send them to us and we'll share them. We liked the life. And, and those are jokes are cute, aren't they, Mama? Oh, yeah. All right, folks. We're going to eat up here. And in just, I don't know what we'll get into. I guess some rest, rest and relaxation. And uh, preparing for this wonderful week that we got coming up for this Thanksgiving week. And uh, you all do the same. Find you something good to eat. Make you some memories. Say goodbye, Mama. Goodbye, Mama. And God bless you all. Bye, y'all. Bye-bye.